All right, guys, hey, today in this video, we're gonna be talking about putting your new Viper track down on your table. So we have a piece of uh, half-inch MDF here. This was bought at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards, pretty much any hardware store. We had it pre-cut there by them to 36 inches wide by 96 inches long, which is um, gonna be what size track we're setting out here. So um, the first thing that you wanna do is go ahead and remove all of your track pieces from your box. And in a previous video, you would have seen how we remove everything from the box. You know, you're gonna have the ghost peanuts in there or the, the packing peanuts. This track is already railed, so if your track is at that point, you can get that out, set it up on your table. And we're gonna just kinda go over just some basics of uh, how to lay this thing out and really what to do with it once you once you get it going here, so. So it does take a little bit of kind of shuffling. Um, one thing that you will want to do is get out your dog bones and <clears throat> you're gonna wanna get your dog bones out and just set them in to lock each piece in place. So these dog bones still have the tabs on them from the router and uh, usually we'll use a pair of flush cut pliers and we'll just snip those off. We actually do it at a pretty wide angle so that that part you know that it's down. For this video, we are just going to put them in partially so that you can kind of see where they go. We'll go through and do that on each one. And these really are just to locate each track piece. They're, they're not really under stress. They're not doing really anything other than just locating the placement for um, each piece. And if you do have to move pieces or sections, just, you know, just kind of be real gentle with it if you need to get extra help. You certainly, you know, we encourage that you have help. You don't want to be damaging anything or causing any kind of unwanted problems for stuff. The dog bones all will fit really nicely. Um, they shouldn't take a lot of force. This stuff, you know, it, it's not bulletproof. It can break. It can um, crack, split, you know, a number of things, but for the most part, this is just, you know, right out of the box. You can see the joints are up a little bit. Don't worry about that. Once we screw it down, it'll all go down. Um, so we got all of our dog bones out. And <clears throat> now your track is laid out on the table. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do, and this really depends on how your table is arranged, if you want to push the front straight away up against the edge, or if you want the equal space around the track, um, basically if the track was centered up. So what I typically will do is just start with a measurement off the end. So we're at inch and an eighth on that end, and inch and a half on this end. So we just need to shift the track just a little bit. On a small track like this, one person can easily do that. On a big track, I definitely recommend you have somebody help you. So we're looking at inch and three eighths, <clears throat> inch and three eighths. So we've set our X dimension. Our next one is gonna be our distance of our front straightaway. So we'll start down here. We are right at about seven eighths of an inch. And right here, we're at five eighths. So we need to kind of push this over, give ourselves seven eighths on the straightaway. And we will come over to this side, seven eighths, seven eighths. So now we're pretty well centered. 
you can actually see because of the diameter of this curve that this is actually further out than the S's are. If you wanted to move the whole track over, you could. I typically wouldn't. I would rather have the S's have a little bit more room than the sweeper does here. Um, if you want to come over here, you can see these are kind of the general tools that we're using today. So we got a drill. We have 5 8 wood screws. Um, this is what we always use to put our tracks down to mount them. You can use half inch. You could use three quarters. I mean, you could use four inch long screw if you really want to, but we usually use five eighths. Um, these other tools here, we will be using a little bit later in the video, but for right now, we're just gonna pull a couple screws out and we're gonna just lock this guy down. So at this point, you really wanna make sure this is where you want your track to be uh, because once you put these screws in, you're not gonna be able to move that hole. If you wanna move the track over you know, an eighth of an inch, like you're gonna be double holing it. So you really wanna make sure that everything is where you want it to be. This drill has a choke. So it's on the lowest setting right now. You don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna blow the screw through your brand new track, okay? Um, we don't want you to do that either, okay? So something else that is a little bit of a, a kind of a tip here is this washer. What we will do with this is if you place it over where your screw goes in, if you happen to pop off your screw, that hit right there, if this washer wasn't there, it would be denting your track. The last thing that we want you to do with your brand new track is dent it with your drill. So definitely you can make this out of anything. I happened to just make this up this morning really quick for this video. Do uh, you just wanna make sure that your screw head goes through it? And as long as your screw head goes through it, then you're good to go. You can use, uh, you could even use one of the extra dog bones that comes in your kit. You could use a piece of cardboard, really anything. Um, you're just wanting to protect that so that when you go down to put your screw in, that you're not gonna miss and pop a hole in it. It's very easy to miss. And this, you know, you just want these to be flush for right now. You don't want to rip them in there. This was on the choke and it barely clicked off, which means that it's possible it's already too tight. Um, I don't like to have these screws super tight. I like them to be below flush, but also just very snug. So now that piece is locked in. Um, we probably could be okay just leaving that one piece locked in. And this next step that we're gonna do is we'll take a pencil. You can use a marker, a Sharpie, a mechanical pencil is actually what I prefer to use because you can pop the lead out. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through and each of these power tap holes, we're just gonna mark them in our table. And I like to use a pencil because I can erase it. If you get marker on the track, uh, you're probably not gonna have a very good time getting it back off of the track. You probably be better off to just leave it on there if you do get marker. So I definitely recommend a pencil, but you're gonna wanna go around and everywhere that there is through holes, like these three are for our sensor and you want to mark those. And the reason that you're gonna mark these is that we're actually gonna remove the track back off the table and we're gonna go through with a, a spade bit and we're gonna pop a hole through our tabletop so that our wiring can drop down in there. Some guys will drill right through this hole. Some guys will drill a hole and use a jigsaw. You can do it any way you want to, okay? There's no right or wrong way to do this. The way that we're showing you today is the most common method for somebody at home to do this. Um, here at the shop, when we do our own tracks, if somebody was to be buying this track from us, we would CNC route the entire tabletop. All of the screw holes would be in it. We'd have pockets cut out for anywhere that there's electrical. We'd have other pockets wherever there's cross braces. We'd have pockets in the top so we could run electrical underneath the, the track between the table and those cross boards. Um, 
A lot of people don't know that. They think that, you know, we're just slapping a track together on a, on a table and charging an arm and a leg for it. Well, it's, it's a precision CNC'd tabletop. It's not just a slap together uh, unit. So we, looks like we have all of our holes marked. Something else that you could do, even though we've screwed this down, is I will just draw a basic reference mark here just kind of a pen mark on the outside of the track. And I might put one on one end. If you don't want to draw on the table or if you've already painted your top, then you might use some blue tape or something. Um, so now we're basically going to reverse what we have done. We're going to unscrew this. Once again, if you're worried about hitting the top of your track, you definitely want to use some type of a um, a guard, you know, the, the washer. These dog bones, they'll just pop out. And uh, for, for this video, we will just be working on this area right here so that we don't have to remove the entire track. So right here, you can see we have all of our marks. Also, because we used MDF where the screws went in, it has done what we call a molehill, which it, it raises the material up. We oversize our holes so that that can go into the hole. Um, it's, you know, it, it, if you have the ability to screw the entire track down and then remove it, you can actually go through, sand those down and that would be ideal. That would be the, the best way to do that. But for now, um, we're going to move on to our next step. We have a one inch spade bit. Now, one inch is way more than what we need. But what we're going to do here is we're going to take our spade bit and we're just going to eyeball the center of those two holes and We'll just go ahead and blow a hole in it. And let's move this out of the way. Let's move this guy over just a smidge here. So if you have a jigsaw, you can actually do the inside and the outside holes. And this doesn't matter if this is a two lane, four lane, six lane, eight lane, whatever it is, this process is the same. So if you have a jigsaw, you can go ahead and cut those and you'll have a nice little window there. That window just gives you more room to work with your wires under there. That's why I prefer that versus just drilling a eighth inch hole through the table. Um, for this one, we're just gonna drill another hole here in the center. So we have our holes here. You're going to want to do this same process all the way around. All right, we got our uh, power tap holes drilled and our uh, sensor holes. If you want to take a look here, this is what it looks like. You can see when you use the uh, spade bit, it will kind of blow out the end, kind of go in with your sanding block. Or you could leave it. I mean, some of you might not care, but you just go through kind of hit those with your sanding block. And at this point, you would be under your table most likely. You probably won't have the luxury of flipping it over the way that we did here, but for video purpose, that was the easiest way that we could do that. Um, so at this point, you would be ready to start laying out your wiring, but let's go ahead and get this guy flipped over. Now, at this point, <clears throat> from the top, you would want to, um, Go ahead and lay out your wiring. We got the track all fastened back down. We, you, you could go through, you could shim the joints if you want to. Uh, if the track has an overpass at this point, you would want to set up your uh, bridge supports, which um, we could cover in another video. But pretty much this thing is ready for the table wiring layout. The track is mounted, your power tap holes are drilled and that's pretty much it. So be sure to check out our other videos and uh, if you have different method or process that may be helpful for others, go ahead and uh, leave it in the comments and uh, that's it.